Uh, Santi Sana. All right. I thank you very much for taking this opportunity to come and be with us. I know that some of you had tried uh, to log in last week when you were using Teams and uh, uh, the, our registration had an error. And this is the day. So thank you so much. And I want to believe that you had a very good uh, uh, day today. Uh, so my name is Margaret Oidaka. For those who do not know me, I've worked in the field of career guidance and advice for over 10 years. Um, I have been a, a national panel member for KICD, championing um, career guidance in PCIs. Uh, we want to believe that uh, career guidance is going to be mainstream completely in CBC, uh, because those are some of the things that we put across. I'm also the board chair of Career Guidance Institute. That is a professional body of career guidance practitioners. We are changing uh, to, career, uh, to uh, Kenya Career uh, Development Association very soon. All um, will be announcing that later for those ones who are already here who are in our association. And uh, of course, I work uh, in College of Career Guidance and Development where we offer various services. I'm going to be talking about it uh, slightly earlier. And then I'm also the president for, for EACD, that is the East African Career Development Association. We, it was started uh, last year, and uh, we've been able to come up with an election, and I was able to, I, I was there with also Dr. Masi, who will be with us today. I've also co-authored a book called Discover Your Career Workbook, which has been approved for use in schools. My co-author, I have seen her here, Victoria, hi. Um, yes, we ordered this book and it's been used in school. For the teachers who are here, maybe you have come across this. If you haven't, uh, please ensure that you buy uh, the book. It is very good for students. All right. I want to, to talk about a little bit about who we are. We are an online institution. Uh, we are registered by the government of Kenya and we are being registered right now by Tibet, uh, by Tiveta. Uh, our objectives is to impart career guidance and development skills uh, and competences to young people and also uh, persons and individuals uh, involved in offering career guidance services to diverse population. That is the adults and that is why we are here because uh, I believe we are in that category. Uh, career development content developers, that is one of the areas that uh, we do a lot. Uh, of, uh, last, the last uh, product that we produced was Career Guidance Framework for Tibet uh, for five countries that was sponsored by UNESCO. It was under there too. We also produced uh, another book for CPD, also by UNESCO. We did it at the beginning of this year. Uh, we have not placed it yet because it's not yet been published, and uh, that is what we are waiting for its publication and, uh, of course, the launch. Uh, we also executive members of career development professional bodies in Kenya. We are members for both in both of the associations. Why are we talking about career conversations? Why do we brand these career conversations? This is because uh, there has been a lot of misconceptions when it comes to careers. Uh, very many people have this belief that you can only start discussing careers during transition and want to speak about the different aspects of career conversations. We are going to be having these webinars in every two weeks, and then you'll be able to be talking about different conversations in the space of career guidance and development. And uh, that is a brand for the webinars uh, for CCGD. Uh, okay. What is the purpose of this event? We want to demystify the concept of career development services. Like I've said, it has a lot of assumptions. It has uh, many people, it has a lot of assumptions, it has a lot of perceptions, uh, misunderstandings and understanding, a lot of, uh, we need to find clarity about the different issues when it comes to career development. If you can hear, I'm talking about career development, I'm talking about career guidance, exactly what is it. Uh, we may not be able to uh, completely clar uh, give clarity to that, but career, career conversations over time will be able to offer that. We are also able to offer insights onto the different areas of uh, career development. Briefly, uh, we will have, I've, I've already done the, the, the number one and two. Uh, we'll have Dr. Massey, 
in 20 minutes, you'll be able to tell us about the concept and assumptions of career development services. Uh, then we are going to have a CCGD student experience uh, to tell us uh, whether this has really been demystified. I've already seen her uh, on the floor. Uh, then we can have a few discussions and Q&A, then we'll be able uh, to close. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I would like to speak, uh, I would like to introduce to you our main speaker. Uh, this is Dr. Masi Maina. She is a co-director in CCGD. She's the director of learning, development, and research. She is the head of the faculty in CCGD. Um, she has a PhD in, uh, in curriculum and instructions, and she did an independent study of career guidance and education from AIU. And that is how after her, her PhD, she was able to develop, we were able to co-develop uh, the diploma that she'll be talking about a little bit later. She has over 20 years experience in training, advising, counseling in different sectors, uh, in schools, colleges, universities, and institute. And also we work together very closely in CGI or soon to be KCDA and also in EACDA. Uh, because of her work, she does professional standards in both associations. So I would like to welcome Dr. Masi Maina uh, so that she can take us through the assumptions and concepts of career development. I'll stop sharing Dr. Masi and then you can share the slides. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Um... I think that's better now. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much, Margaret. Um, and uh, Welcome to this conversation. I will be indulging you in some questions and then, then we can also respond. You can either respond on the chat or you can feel free and mute and, and speak. So why are we demystifying career services? Why is it important for this conversation? Uh, I will share some images and then now we can talk about it and we can talk about them. So when you look at these images, the first image of the young man, the chef and uh, other courses, what does it speak? What is it communicating? When we have graduates who are educated and they're saying, and, uh, and they are unemployed, what does that mean? Uh, we have others who want the students in schools want to know what subject should they choose and what are the options. We have the CBC, which has um, the mission is to nurture every learner's potential. How can we help um, identify their potential? How can we nurture it? And how can we help all students uh, become successful? What about the undecided, and what about the workers in the world of work? Experiencing changes, and then also creating another level of confusion or which route will this person go to? What do they speak to us and who should help these people in all this, in their own circumstances, at different stages, and at different, you know, uh, and different settings and also at different age. So who should be able to respond to their needs or to their, their cry for help? We can write in the, on the chat or part of reflection. The next one will be another image on Every year we have candidates, we have students transitioning into post-secondary, into, into life after high school. 
I want to, sorry. So these are the numbers every year, and this will not even be different from the 2022 candidates. So because it will still be around the same percentage, about 20% um, are the ones who go into university according to the placement service board. Then we have the TVET placement. Again, we'll still have another one. And then we have the balance, about 70% remain within our communities and we are not able to account for them. What should we do? Who is responsible for them? And what should be our response? Uh, we have uh, reports about workers or the graduates entering the job market that they experience a lot of skills mismatch. A report by Federation of Kenya Employers 2018, it shows only about 66% of the graduates living our higher education institutions are not prepared for the world of work. What does that, who is responsible and what should we do? If we again, we go into the workplace and the HR people on the, in this chart, they can tell us what is, the, what is how aligned are the employees uh, to their tasks that are the, or the area that they are they are working, are they properly aligned? And if they are not, who is responsible? Where is the where, where, where is the disconnect? Is it at the place of uh, admission of of recruitment, or is it from the learning institutions? So from this studies, I mean the the percentages, there's only seven percent say they're in the right career, twenty seven don't know. And if they are not, don't know, it means they are indecision, they are undecided. And then we have about 66 saying they are in the wrong careers. Another uh, study that was done by UNICEF 2018 on happy employees globally, 63 say they dislike their jobs, 24 they hate it. So a lot of emotion, emotions associated with it. Only that 13% that love their jobs. Who is responsible and who should who should respond to their cry? I think maybe I need to pause so that we can have any 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 response. Who should be responsible for this particular the scenario, different scenario? Our students in the learning institution, the transition. Um, so who 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 is responsible? If it's the workplace, we go. Then we also in our communities we find so many of them. The seventy one percent that remain. Who where are they? Where do they go? And what should uh, yeah, I mean? And what should they be doing beyond the learning? Any response? And if somebody can comment on that, and then we can be able to um to proceed. And if there's any, any anyone can can respond. Are the teachers responsible? Are they the HR? Sorry. Is there someone who wants to comment? I can I can uh, chip in. Huh? Okay, Sawa. Excellent, excellent, Stephen. Yes, yeah. Uh, the topic being an assumption, eh? mm. the assumption, but I can see they are being uh, backed by statistics, eh? mm. and the numbers don't lie. Mm. In one way or the other, there is where the rain started beating us. Mm -hmm. And I think this goes back even to the, our nuclear families, mm -hmm. whereby some of the parents they coerce their kids to plant them some certain courses, mm -hmm. either because of their parents, their relatives, or their uncles. Because we are lacking an engineer in the company, in the, the family, you must do engineering. Another thing is the perception that there are some courses and the careers which are lucrative, like engineering, law, uh, medicine. Eh? Mm -hmm. So a kid, or a student who has got a passion in art is being forced through peer pressure or perception in the market that do nursing or law 
that is where money is. Another thing also is uh, is, the, is the nurturing of our, our, of, our, of our children. Parents are becoming so much disconnected. To an extent that someone finishes clear from so the parent doesn't know what the student wants. And then the student himself or herself, she has never realized herself. So what happens is like when he's being picked to do a course, maybe in university, he picks the course because of the peer pressure. I want to do become because my, my college mate did a specialization in finance. And because I don't want to be lonely, then let me team up and do finance. For four years, I'll be having a friend mm -hmm. and I showed her to Lina. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing also some element of globalization. Mm -hmm. That uh, influence of some certain donors and sponsors coming to our country in a way, I want to sponsor 50 students to Nairobi University to do a certain course like climate change. Mm -hmm. If you happen to see the, the student is being pushed to do those course because one, I've been funded. I'm not going to, the course has been uh, withdrawn from the parents. So Nibure, we, it's, it's free. I've, I've got sponsorship to an extent of even some of them being flown out of the country for four years in uh, in, uh, in uh, Japan to be planted to a course. When he comes back, he doesn't know why. For him, he was having some fantasies, having to read, learn out of the country. When he comes back here, he feels misplaced mm -hmm. because the course itself is supposed to be marketable abroad. But here, the issue to do with uh, climate change engineering such a cause, who will factor you in that? So you become a waste in the society. Mm -hmm. So I am having those variables of more than four, five. Mm -hmm. The reason why we are having, and it is so shocking, 63% dislike what they do. Meaning by the end of the day, they go to the house and they start taking painkillers. Mm -hmm. Because they are stressed, they are depressed, they mm -hmm. hate what they do. They mm -hmm. actually wish it is on man friday because mm -hmm. tomorrow is a weekend i will not go to work mm -hmm. and we having a crop of that now starting to eat the 13 percent those who love their job that's the reason why 90 percent of the organization they need a lot of human capital on the team because you might be planting the right people and within three months of the probation they are being infected with a certain disease and a culture within the company of hating what you do, disliking what you do, negative perception towards your job, which now crop to non-performance, not even meeting your target, uh, wishing to be absent out of work, uh, non-productivity. You see, the consequences are too much. If taken seriously, this is a disease. A lot of investment companies are doing to plan and start companies, but if they fail to use these so-called assumptions, which are they are not assumptions, I might call them realities, because it is eating companies. Companies are falling and rising because of ignoring such statistics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambua. Thank you. Thank you. That was a, a, a good observation. We'll do the next one with the two people who've raised their hands. We'll be able to, um, to be able to comment in the next one. So, so based on this, if those are the challenges that people are experiencing and uh, our students are going through, then and we are thinking in terms of, uh, it means that there is a lot of influences as Mr. Ambua has said, that influence in terms of career choice. We have the parents, we have the peer pressure, we have um, where there are people who would sponsor and then they dictate the kind of courses that our, our stu children are going to take uh, because of scholarships and uh, sponsorship, then who should help these students or who should help? our children, our brothers and sisters, and our parents, so that we can have a better um, environment where the, we are able to be productive and be more successful in it. So look at this, and this is general assumptions that have been picked uh, on the area of why these some of the challenges exist. 
if we think that as some people think, when we think in terms of careers and career development services, it just, there's no, it amount, all you need is to be shown how to work, to look for a work, to look for work and employment. Anyone can give the service to provide or to preempt those challenges that we have seen. Uh, career services only work well in, uni in colleges and universities and work. And so they do not need because they've already, they have already chosen their field. People trained in guidance and counseling, psychology, HR is sufficient enough to offer the career development services. Zipporah, can you mute? Zipporah, can you mute? Zipporah, can you and then career starts at high school and only important and transition into going into post-secondary education, whether it is university, whether it's TTIs or vocational training centers. And then we have this. Uh, this career development is synonymous to career counseling and advice. And uh, so then all this will be used as one. And uh, so depending on where a person is sitting from or where they, they, they perceive the service needs to be given. So these are the people who will offer that service to the people. Then if these are the people who are supposed to do that, then why do we have so many problems with all those that we have listed? Unhappy workers, mismatch, indecision, confusion, and all that. So that's why we want to needed to have that picture so that eventually we can look at the service. So what's then career development services? What are the insights and what are the opportunities for our for all these people who have these challenges? So we start by defining what career is, concept of work, uh, learning and leisure activities across lifespan. And so career then becomes dynamic and it is unique to each person. It involves balancing paid and unpaid work and also personal life roles. And so their preparation could either be formal, informal, and non-formal. So, and so what is then career development? It is an inclusive term that is related to choices and outcomes through which every person must pass. So depending at which stage and, and at whatever opportunity at a, at, a, at a person, depending on their role and uh, the stage at which they are, so there are choices that a person needs to cut to, to, to make and, and the home. outcomes that home. they need to I want to go home too. Go home. Something else is fine. Great. I'm not saying it's all your fault. Maybe it's my fault. Then I'm phase is something that you're going it through. It is intentional. Uh, Cherry You got a problem. Now tell me about it. No. It is an intentional service uh, that uh, it is not intentional. And so it is not an intervention, but an object of intervention. So what are the services uh, associated with it so that career development is not an intervention? And so the process therefore involves, um, it's a lifelong process of managing life, learning, work, leisure, and transitions across lifespan in order to move um, a person is able to move profession, uh, in, in an area that they will feel that they're successful and the area that they have identified in terms of their future, in their current and into their future life. So based on that, if it is a lifelong process and it is a, so it then uh, takes a lifelong lifespan model. And so based on that, we have the basic education. So we have education needs career development services in basic education. And if we think in terms of that, when we look at the graduates who are saying they are educated and they have no jobs, are there other opportunities that exist within their community and in a way that they can use some of the skills they have learned and be able to, uh, to make a, 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 an opportunity where they can earn an income out of it? So basic education career begins from basic education all the way in um, to senior school, 
Then we have the transition into post-secondary education. So whether vocational training centers, polytechnics, private colleges and universities. Then we have in the workplace, so they move to the workplace. And in the workplace, then we also have the um, from 25 or the, it, uh, up to the area of, to the time of retirement. Then we have the community where we think some of uh, the 71% that do not pro uh, proceed into post-secondary education, then they may fall under this, the community, including with the retired and those ones who uh, um, retire early. Then we also have those changing ch jobs, those ones who are losing, uh, uh, losing jobs. And then we also have the early school leavers, the migrant workers and all these. So these characteristics and in terms of all this, if we think in, again in terms of opportunities for this, how many schools need the service so that we can help the students in terms of nurturing their and identifying their careers, uh, their, their, um, their talents? Those ones who need to, to, to choose subjects, those ones who need to join into post-secondary education, those who need to be helped in the terms of the workplace, those ones in the community and their disadvantage and they need to have the service so that they can either re-enter school or they can be able to have um, skills development. What does that mean? So think in terms of how many people are trained to address these needs? And is there an opportunity for our unemployed graduates, for those who are changing jobs and especially where they, they have been declared redundant? Are they those ones who are early, retire, in early retirees? So what is the opportunity for this? Um, the influence of growth in terms of career development are several and including globalization and new technologies, the growth and emergence of new careers. So there is this need to provide all this information to those, all those, the disadvantaged and those who need uh, the, the career development services. There's the uh, people who are in, uh, in terms of um, search for meaning and purpose of work, dynamism and changes in the labor market, Imagine forms of employment and numerous changes throughout working life. So career development is no longer linear. So there will be changing jobs depending on the situation and de depending on the life um, uh, circumstances, roles and all that. So we'll have as many people changing their jobs, not the way it used to be a long time ago. And so there are so new uh, dimensions and uh, that is influencing its growth. And so we need to have the right information to be able to, to share with the people going through these changes. So the concept of development, of career development um, has been studied and um, for many years. It has over a hundred years experience. Uh, worldwide, and it started in America in the 18 in the late 1800s. And uh, so, for this, uh, during the celebration of the 100 years of um, the National Career Development Association, which is a professional body of uh, career development practitioners in America, the thought leaders came together and to reflect on the ideas that have shaped and have changed the career development field. And they identified 20 career ideas and ranked them in order. And these are the words that they came up with that would influence going forward how career development is going to evolve. So they came up with 20 words uh, from these, the thought leaders uh, from, so they had counseling, they have matching, and all these words are either associated with the theories or the activities that are related to career development services. And so out of that, the 20 words, they, um, they came up with a new idea of career development field and uh, divided into two parts in terms of the practice and then the practitioners. So the development of the practice, so it has identified four areas, five areas. We have the guidance, the it's a, the new idea in the new field promotes practices of career guidance, education and counseling that use inventories, information and interventions so that they can help people learn to make transitions which fit their values as well as develop their personalities. 
So those are the six areas that um, that govern the practice, the proper, the best practices of uh, career development practice. And therefore, using those activities, uh, the practices, then a practitioner will pr prioritize uh, the actions with the clients in terms of matching, in terms of congruence, in terms of stages, in terms of adaptability, self-efficacy, uh, work volition, and happenstance. So depending on is it the matching this in terms of the characteristics of an individual, the congress, the, perf the perfect fit, career stages at different, uh, the career services at different stages, when the circumstances change, when the globalization has taken place, so it means the work needs, the workers need to adapt to the new realities and what they need to do. Work volition, despite even when there are challenges, how can they be able to make um, informed choices? And then when chances comes, when circumstances change and there are opportunities for changing, so do you get paralyzed or do you move to the next stage so that you can take an, an opportunity of what chances have, um, what the environment has provided? And so what would a person do? So the role of our practitioners is to be able to match, to be able to use these actions so that individuals are able to, uh, to be able to make informed choices and be able to have a fulfilling uh, career development journey. So the practice therefore is informed by these six activities or uh, guidance, assisting individuals so that they can choose an occupation, prepare for it, enter into it and progress within it throughout their lives uh, their, across lifespan. Education is how a career education systematic um, educational programs designed to foster individual development from uh, elementary, from basic education, all the way through adult life. The counseling, the formal relationship in which counseling professional will be able to assist clients to cope with more, um, more effectively with career concerns. If a person who is uh, experienced, if they, we, are, we observe that there are a lot of uh, absenteeism, unhappiness, then the role of the counseling, career counseling comes in so that they can be able to address the concerns about the individual. Information, we, decisions and cannot be done without information. So occupational industry information should be provided for, education and training should be provided for, social information related to the world of work should be readily available, whether it's in digital or whether it is in print format. Then we have inventories so that they can, these are tools used to uh, by trained practitioners uh, with their clients to address their career needs, to identify those, um, the, the students who are in uh, uh, um, are experiencing indecision. How can we use inventory so that they can be able to use, so we can administer the tools so that they can be able to unpack or be able to um, help them uh, identify what their interests are, what their passions are, what their talents are. And so inventory tools, uh, career inventories then become a tool to help uh, practitioners, trained practitioners, because they are ethical uh, practices associated with the administration of assessment tools. Then interventions will be tailored services to provide support based on individual needs. And this could either be advising, could be mentoring, and could also be coaching. And so this by and large would be the, the, the best practice in terms of career development. And this has been acknowledged uh, by the global uh, community who are advancing uh, the best practices of career development field. So what are the global efforts to develop the, uh, the career development field? So we have awareness campaigns that the global bodies uh, European Union Education, um, European Training Fund, International Labor Organization, UNESCO, and all these groups. So they have awareness campaigns. And every year, the month of November, there is a global career month. And anyone who has a new in innovation, who has a new idea, who can share, there is an opportunity for knowledge sharing during that month. And we also challenge you, if you have any um, idea that you'd want to share 
during the global month in November and we'll be able to announce and be able to share with you, then you can participate and you can share your, uh, any, um, any, any ideas about career development fields within your practice. It also champions development competency frameworks so that the practitioners are guided on what the competencies that they need to have. And for that reason, they also advocate through the, uh, the competency framework, there's, advocate, uh, there's an advocacy or there's advo uh, they're advocating for training and development of practitioners based on the competency framework. South Africa has a good uh, competency framework and they have an effort, they are making an effort to ensure that Africa, we have our own um, uh, competency framework that is African so that we can do not over rely on what has been done in the West. There are also policy development campaigns so that they can regulate in terms of rules and regulation. And we have many of them, uh, the policies development. And in our context in Kenya, we have the, their efforts being done to develop the policy. They also encourage collaborative research innovations on designs of effective delivery services. And so these are the opportunity that can be presented during the global career month in November. And then also encouragement of formation of and membership to local, regional and international professional bodies. The professional bodies become the voice through which uh, best practices are advanced, not um, networking and other activities that are associated with the career development field. So in our local context, so what are the efforts being on what is taking place? We have the, the career development uh, policy uh, that were, had been developed, had, had started, the journey had started last year, and it has now with the post skills depart department, but it has been taken to the Ministry of Labor. And so we are hoping that this is going to be actioned and eventually be uh, gazetted so that we can have uh, the, a policy that governs uh, the practice. Then we have the career development professional body. Kenya has a, a, the Career Guidance Institute, which Margaret talked about, and she's the chair, um, the, the board chair of the Career Guidance Institute, which is soon going to be changed so that we can align with the regional uh, associations. Uh, there's also a, a efforts to, uh, with the professional body has written uh, to the Ministry of Labor so that the, for the, for the practice to be registered as a practice, as a professional, so that it can be listed as a one of the national occupation classification systems. So that is another area of growth and an opportunity that are the practitioners among us who can be able to participate and we can pride ourselves to be professionals. Then we also have career development in skill in schools. Uh, the Directorate of Quality Assurance that anyone going to the schools uh, must show requirement of uh, membership to, uh, to a professional body. And through the, um, the, 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 and the membership, the professional body also requires people to be trained in, those, in the career development services. So those are the two areas through which um, the local context in where the career development services is being championed or it's been advocating for. Then we have the CBC, the new competence, the, the, the competency-based curriculum. We are thinking there's a lot of going on in the CBC. And one of them is that a, a nurturing learner's talents or a potential and, and um, uh, nurturing the learner's potential. Who, who, who will, because the parents get stuck in terms of information, the schools and our teachers also um, uh, have a challenge in terms of unpacking the same information. So who should be able, who should be able to, who is responsible for unpacking uh, CBC so that it can require, so that the career development services within the CBC uh, can, be, uh, can be made simpler for the parents, for the students, for the schools and the society. So those are the areas that are taking are the challenges. So then based on all that, do we have an opportunity? Is it a crisis and what can we do? And who then? We acknowledge and, uh, that our HR practitioners, psychologists, counselors, teachers, coaches are 
do a good job, but are they professionals in career development services? Are they career development practitioners? That is a good, good for thought. And as a, as a HR practitioner, we can reflect and see and whether is there a crisis when we have all those people within coming to your organizations and then you have a lot of experience in absenteeism, you ex start experiencing job hoping. So where is the issue? Why are our workers discontented? Why are, they, are we experiencing people having a lot of mental health issues that the psychologists, the counselors have to, you know, all the time have to be solving some of the work related issues? Where can they be preempted? Are our teachers competent enough to solve all those issues that we have seen within our school? It is food for thought. So if then it is an opportunity and the global trends is that the job you say there are people are going to change their jobs from one level to another, then it means we need to have new skills. Some of us are going to reskill, others are going to upskill, and others are to start from somewhere. So and though we provide that opportunity through this diploma in career guidance development that is co-developed with uh, APMA Education UK, which is uh, equated by Kenya National Qualification Framework at level six, and which has nominal or credit hours of 256 uh, credits. So the target group for this would be a person either in HR, it is open to all, but uh, a person already in HR, there's an opportunity to either to expand their scope, the psychology the same, counseling, community development teachers, um, or any other person who has passion uh, for the field uh, for, for the field of careers or career development services. And then so the requirement would be any person who has a, 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 the first qualification either from a diploma or the way to a PhD. We have two, we have two of our students who are PhD who are Dr. Wafula and Dr. Catherine and already here and they're doing the course. Requirement is one year, the duration is one year and four months of internship and uh, its characteristics of the competencies that it will teach would be the cognitive in terms of where we have theory, we have the, the general practice of the, of, of, of the career development services, the functional competencies of organizing uh, career development programs, uh, information, uh, then personal competencies, how do I become, um, do I deliver the service, the com communication, um, the facilitation skills, uh, packaging the information, and then ethical competencies in terms of the, uh, the ethical practices that are associated with career development practices as outlined with the competency frameworks. So which are going, once we have the, um, the, 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 the policy, then we also can, uh, we have the competency framework develop and we'd be able to apply this. The professional body has the standards and guidelines uh, on how the practice should be done. And this has been benchmarked based on that and also benchmarked with the best international best practices. So compliance and uh, standards, uh, the qualification is recognized, equated and accredited by Kenya National Qualification Framework. Assessment, awarding and certification is ABMA UK. And then registration, the center is College of Career Guidance is registered as a center by ABMA and Tiveta and our staff. Uh, I am Tiveta licensed to, to deliver a pedagogy or a, a teacher in a Tibet institution. And then our, our staff, the staff in this, uh, in CCGD, either they have masters in career guidance development from global university. You will see some of our faculty members. So the delivery is scheduled guided virtual classes by Zoom or, or Teams. Then we have a learning management system where we have activities, learning activities and resources, extra resources are posted in learning management um, a system. Then assign, assignments again are administered through uh, teams or learning management system, which is Moodle. And then we also one of the areas we also recognize that um, the payment, uh, the payment, we also uh, flexible payment plans uh, so that uh, 
we don't we so that we can be able to accommodate as many and then so where when i have planned and have trained where would these skills be applied it can either be in curricula course or a workshop planning uh, it can be used in designing developing evaluating revising career education programs integrating career management competencies across school uh, curriculums from all the way from basic education or the TVET, developing and reviewing career information products or even yes, and then developing individual career portfolios. So we know the, the CBC, one of the areas that are in terms of uh, students um, career journey is the development of career portfolios. So a person trained in this area would be very good, would be, um, it would be easy for them to uh, offer this particular service. So what is the way forward? Um, so who do you think can benefit from this training? It could be you, it could be an unemployed graduate in terms of skilling, in terms of uh, expand, uh, it could be um, either a neighbor, our children, and it is open to all. So we have our intakes every May and September, and we have a May intake ongoing, and we can be able to apply, and Margaret can be able to post the portal on the chat and also on the or the, on, the, on, on, on the chat, the application procedures. These are faculty members. We have Pauline, we have Dr. Fidel Baraza. Uh, Pauline is a HR practitioner and she's, she's doing a unit on uh, career guidance in workplace. Dr. Fidel is a career guidance in, um, in special needs for special needs population. Nikki is good in career education programs and also career theories. We have Amy, which is good in career for schools or learning communities, advising and mentoring. Miss Polly Wiggins for uh, career information and career guidance practice. Uh, Dr. Taylor, which is a research, academic uh, research from South Africa. So you have Amy from UK, uh, Polly from UK, Nikki from UK, and you also have Dr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Edward. Edward is also a PhD student in curriculum and instruction, and he's passionate about learning online and learning management systems. So he's our support system in that area. So uh, I will use, and uh, part in short is using the Matthew, the, the Matthew when, when Jesus preached and said that uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Do we have as many laborers in this field to be able to meet all those career needs? If you think from your, your village, the village, the schools, the number, what are the, how many schools do we have in this country? And do they need career development services? The 70% the that remain in our community, who should take care of them? The workers in the organizations, who needs to work for them? So. This is where my pattern, uh, my, my pattern short that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, just as Jesus wanted as many. We have many lost souls, but even in our career, in the, the career development field, we have as many who are lost and we need to have them have the right, um, in the right perspective in the be able to get to, to, to be able to find a fulfilling uh, career life. And I want to end there and thank you for listening to me. Back to you, Margaret. So. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Massey. Always very insightful, uh, very well done. I want to believe that. I want to, I will give you uh, time for Q&A, but I want to give uh, a short time for uh, Susan Daria, who is a student in cohort one in the first group, who will tell us briefly about her experience as a harvester, uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Masi has said, uh, then she can uh, tell us about her, your experience, uh, Susan. Susan? Thank you so much, Director Margaret. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Uh, okay. Uh, 
thank you so much uh, for the opportunity just to come in and speak today. My name is uh, Susan Daria. And um, I think I'll just rush through my, my short experience, how I got to how I got to this place where we are to, to, to here today. Now, um, some time back, um, in the last, let me, let me say 10, 10 to 12 years, uh, I've been working in the institutions of higher learning in the university setup in the country. And um, I spent five years in KU between 2010 and 2015. After that, I came to the University of Nairobi. And within my experiences working around students, I noticed there's a, there's a big gap in uh, career information from the students who we are absorbing from the high schools across the country. Um, they would come into university, and I assume this is the same thing that happens in all college, uh, colleges, colleges um, across board, and they basically don't know what they want to do. Most of them are guided into the programs that they, they do because of the grades they have and all the other factors that one of our speakers had, had mentioned you know, before, parent, parental pressure, peer pressure, you know, big titles. But essentially, when they get to second, third year, you'll see students dropping out of programs or losing interest and deviating for what specifically brought them into university. And um, within the same period, I've been spending time in schools, you know, serving on boards and just giving back my time. And you'll also notice the same ignorance among teachers and parents and students because people don't necessarily have um, professional guidance in career guidance and development. So that's a big gap that um, we missed out maybe in the 844 curriculum, probably, but it was it's a big gap that was mi missed out in the education system that we were churning out um, theoretically trained people, but the skills and the, the information they need to actually pursue careers that are, that are tailored towards their interests and their skills and their talents doesn't exist. So um, in my in my um, experience in the schools, mm -hmm. I still felt I needed something to, to give me, you know, to like uh, nurture me in a way that what I'm doing could be professional. So I went online and I started searching around to see whether there's anyone who does what I do or who does it better. That's when I came around um, Discover Your Career, and which linked me to Director Margaret Redaka and Dr. Masi Maina. I started following them online, but then we didn't know each other. And then in the course of following, I stumbled upon the Career Guidance Institute. That was around 2020, Career Guidance Institute. And I even signed up to be to become a member, membership more than once, and started writing emails and wondering why. They never got back to me. That's when I was informed that, they, uh, that there's, um, there's this course that is coming up, and it has slowed down everything because they're waiting for it to be commissioned which eventually mm -hmm. happened, I think, in 2021. And when the first program was um, announced for the first intake, I didn't. I just jumped onto it because I knew this is what I needed. Besides what I do in the, in the university setup as, as a, an, an academic career, my passion is in career guidance and development among students in high school and, and uh, college level. So I didn't want to wait, to wait. I just took it up. And then... Um, it's been a journey. It's, uh, it's been one year already, but um, my colleagues who are here, who are also in the meeting I've seen, will tell you that time has just flown because uh, for us, this has been um, quite an insightful journey. And it has opened us our minds up to, and kept us to so much information that we thought we had, but we actually don't. Because um, this program has taken me right from the fundamental of career guidance and development, which we never knew existed, you know, and the theories and the practice that um, Dr. Massey has spoken about, the 100 years that of existence in such programs. But just because in Africa we don't have it, uh, you know, within our setup we didn't have it. Huh? Um, for us, it was something new. And um, I'd say it's, it's quite an intense program, having gone through different degree, degree levels. For me, this is, I think, the most intense program that I have done. And it, it is... Um, quite fulfilling to have gone through it because it has given me the career information I need and the professional practice in you know, career assessment, advising, mentoring, counseling, career coaching, and to be able to demarcate the different, those different practices. Because initially, I think I just used to mix them up. I didn't even know what it was I was doing. I was just trying to help people in community. But looking, looking, looking at what I've gone through in the class setup, I've been, I'm able to tell when I was doing this, I was actually doing career advising. Most of what I was doing in the schools was career advising. And it's been 
quite a journey, quite a journey. It's, it's ended, it, it's, we're actually finishing up and I'd say it has ended sooner than we thought. And um, I would just like to encourage anyone who would like to take up the program, not to even think about it, because not to think twice about it, because um, like Dr. Massey has said, the, there's a lot to be done. The laborers are very few. You can imagine being taught about career guidance across the lifespan, li lifespan, and you can just pick a specific cohort and take that as your clientele and go with it and take them through all the career guidance and development that they need. It's quite fulfilling. Um, for, for me, I like the positively intense um, experience that I've had in this program. I like the flexibility because of adult learning. All of us are adult learners. Some of us are international. We, I think we have a Rwandese with us. And um, the experience has been really flexible for us. You know, um, I would also say the fees is affordable and payments are very flexible. The exams are so adult friendly, you know, very thought provoking, very intense, but research based, but manageable. And uh, um, also, I appreciate the membership into the professional body because now this is what is going to mentor us and carry us through as we nurture this dream or as we roll over this dream that has been nurtured by Dr. Margaret Raizaka and uh, Dr. Masi Maina. And um, for those who are thinking of joining us in May, welcome, Karibuni. It's something you actually won't regret taking it up. Uh, for those of us in cohort one, we are finalizing. We're on our last uh, trimester. And um, we are gearing up now to go for our internship before we graduate in October later this year. And I'm really grateful to be here today. It's some, it's, um, I actually put on hold every other thing I was doing just to take up this program and I do not regret it a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. Uh, that was great. You are, uh, Susan is one of the persons who've been very passionate about careers. I can say that Susan called me every two weeks to ask me, are you done? Are you done? And here she is. And I'm grateful to hear the feedback that you've given, Susan, because uh, like Dr. Massey said, that we really need as many people as possible uh, for this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now, I would like to open the floor right now uh, to anybody with a question. Uh, so that uh, the question can come to either me or Dr. Marcy or even Susan. Um, anyone with a question can raise your hand. I can see Galaxy raised your hand a long time ago. I'm not sure. Uh, if anybody has a question, can uh, raise up your hand and then we can all you can put in some, uh, you can write uh, on the chat. Any question? Any comment, any observation? Am I missing any hand up? Are we still here? Yes. All right. Any question, any observation? All we want to think about it. <laughs> we want to think about the assumptions and concepts even a little bit more. The gentleman who has Galaxy A2 core, your hand has been up. Would you like to say something? I can see you. You can unmute, unmute. All right, I, I wanted to say something on my... Okay, okay, uh-huh. I wanted to say something on the... Uh-huh. ...and the reason why they're not participating, especially in the career. But I think that... We can't hear you, you properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, I wanted to contribute on a little bit on the... A reason that why the students make the summer career choices, but I think that's part of the issue that they uh, okay. uh, of life. Uh, okay. All right. Anybody with a question?
uh, rights. Um, if there is uh, if there is no one with uh, any question or a chat, if you would like more information about the course or you want more information about uh, what Dr. Massey has taken us through, you can always call us. Dr. Massey, you can write your name uh, you can write your email or leave in your number so that uh, we can uh, continue with these conversations. So if there is no one else, I would be, I'll be talking about the career conversations begin. As I said, we are going to be having a webinar every two weeks. Um, the next one, I have seen somebody on the chat uh, saying, okay, that is Dr. Massey who's written. Uh, the next uh, webinar, it is from uh, Nikki Mo. Uh, the students who are here, this is your teacher. Uh, she's going to be talking about what informs career choices. Is it theory or is it practice? Um, I had a con some conversation with her this afternoon and it is such an exciting angle that she's taking. So please do not miss. We are going to have it on the March 23rd, which is next week. And it will be very, very exciting. Do not miss that is Dr. Um, that is uh, Nikki Mo. She's from the UK, and you can see she's uh, she's taught in this area of career guidance for a very, very uh, long time. Yeah. So thank you very much. If there is nobody else, I think we can close. But, uh, I can I can have an input uh, just okay. for one minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think people are shying away from talking, and it is good to talk. Eh? <laughs> okay. uh, I think, given that then the presentation which has been done, eh, mm. it is uh, the course itself is what people need in twenty first century yes. to save the generation we mm. have right now and in future. People should understand, do a score about themselves. Because a mess to a father is a mess to the kid. And the kids are a mess to your grandchildren. So correction to a father realizing himself or a mother to realize what he's supposed to do now, it is saving a cost of a future generation and uh, an investment which could have been done at the wrong time, which will affect the generation and generation to come. When we are talking about career, we are talking about life. When we are talking about career choice and guidance, we are talking about directing your old family, your clan, your in-laws and your community to the right way. When we want to save this, the amount is coming to around 150. But I wish whoever has it, this is a drop in a sea. Um, I've had a testimony of a student who is saying that uh, he's been done some several degrees, but he's never been taught. I've never done the course. I'm not marketing it. But I'm seeing a situation because I've, I've been handling some cases in the community. And the people are messed up. You find people are doing something totally disconnect from God's intent and their purpose. And there's nothing which is too bad, like living the opposite of yourself. And the pain a million plus to do a course you don't like, to work for a company you have never been in, simply because you want to pay rent. You work for 55 years, you retire. Hopefully you retire, you retire and honorably with the peanuts. Then all of a sudden you go back to that village and whatever you can become is just a liability in the community. So I'm trying to see and trying to evaluate the importance of correcting a mess at 25 years and paying the cost at 55 years. So you better save one, you better invest 150 save yourself your wife and your kids and your in-laws than to feel you are okay right now and you pay the cost later so i think i'm going to organize my accounts and finances and see whether i can become a student as soon as possible so that i can save my kids and my grandchildren thank you
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. I hope to see you in May. Uh, in case of anything, you can always talk to us. Uh, Fred has said, thank, thanks, it was very informative. Beatrice has said, shukran for the session. It is an eye-opener conversation, excellent presentation, informative con uh, uh, conversation. Thank you. And, and we want to thank you for taking this opportunity uh, to be with us here. Uh, I think we need, we have to close now. Uh, it is quarter two. We were supposed to actually start at a close at quarter two. Uh, so thank you very much. Unless somebody else has a final word, and I think I can give it to Jacqueline Bigisa. You are right. I can see you. You can say the final word before we close and unclose. Uh, before you close, please. Yes, yes. Once... Uh, this is Beatrice. Yes, Beatrice. Um... How do we get to know about the next uh, session? Because I think I got this just by sheer luck. Uh, mm. And I can't remember which group posted this session. It was posted on WhatsApp. Is there a way for us to yes. get the link directly? Please. Yes, now, now that uh, you've already here registered, you already have your details, I'm going to send you immediately. Everybody who registers and others, we shall, we shall, and when we send you the link, you can also some buster to all the others, uh, other people, so that they can also have that. Uh, all our webinars are free, uh, it's free information, so that uh, we'll be able uh, to get as many people as possible doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Jacqueline, you're here? I cannot see her. She's not. Uh, Zipporah Musetti? Yeah, I am here. Jackie okay, speaking. Jackie, Jackie. Yeah. You want to okay, here. thank you. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. I don't think I have much to say because Susan, my classmate, has uh, mentioned almost everything. Yes. But uh, yes. for anyone who's here and not taken this course yet, I want to assure you that, uh, as in, you will be getting the best. And as they said, as in, the workers are so few. We are looking at uh, the pioneering class, a group of our 10, and we are wondering where should we start? So the best thing that you will ever get from this course will be one, networking. I've really learned a lot from interacting with the lecturers and getting a lot of insight into what I, uh, I can use to add value to my organization, which is a learning institution. So for anyone here, please, as someone said, they're not marketing this course, but we are saying, if you want to make an impact in the community, go for this course. Uh, thank you, thank you. And you can close with a word of prayer. Okay, let's pray. Uh, good evening, our dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for this informational, inspiring session that we have just heard. Father Lord, we are praying for each and every member represented uh, on this forum this evening. And I pray that Father Lord, as we go and I think more about now, uh, we hope that Father Lord, you will be able to just uh, give us the wisdom and understanding to know how we can impact uh, uh, the community around us. Thank you, Father Lord, for this school, uh, CCGD, for each and everything that they are doing uh, in form of informing us so that we can be ambassadors of career education in schools. Thank you, Father Lord, for each and every opportunity that you have given us along the way. And I pray for each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. Amen. And may you have a great evening and hope to see many of you in me. Amen. Asante. Thank you. Asante sana. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Susan. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? Have a great night. You know what? I, I did my first. I did. Oh.
Thank you. Let me call you. Okay. Auntie Beatrice, how are you? Auntie Beatrice. Oh. Hey, Susan. <laughs> um, uh, Susan. Yes. Oh, I've removed everybody. Now, <laughs> yeah, you're still okay. recording though. But let me tell you, I was um, I was at Loreto Girls last Friday, last Saturday. I did my mm -hmm. first uh, career assessment with them. Mm -hmm. I, I assessed the girls for career interest, the class that 